to get too ahead of myself, but I think I'm ready to start Ambleside Online year two. Hi, I'm Jenny with Kids Learning for Life, and this will be our first year following the Ambleside Online schedule closely, or as closely as possible. I'm going to share how we are getting ready for year two so that you can get ready for year two as well. As always, I encourage you to look into this free online Charlotte Mason curriculum in its entirety at amblesideonline.org. It has truly blessed my family greatly, and I know that it could definitely do the same for your family as well. Plus, I'm not a Charlotte Mason expert, nor am I an Ambleside Online expert, so it's always good to get your information straight from the source. Year two of Ambleside Online, just like other Ambleside Online years, consists of three terms. Now, I don't really think of these as three different things. I don't take a break in between them. I think of them more of just a continual schedule. So if you hear me mention which term a book is introduced in, that's not me getting really persnickety about the schedule and the terms. That's just me letting you know kind of when in the school year you can expect to read that book. So first I wanna start with the books that are continuing from year one into year two. So these are ones we have already started, we've already gotten a good chunk of them done, and we're gonna continue them on. So these books, as far as I can see from the schedule, are Our Island Story, Parables from Nature, and Trial and Triumph. For Our Island Story, I'm really excited to continue on in this book. This has been a great history book for us. This is the history of England, and it's written for children, and it's been working great for us. We are also really excited to continue on with Parables from Nature into year two. This was one of our surprising favorites from year one because I really had very low expectations. So that's kind of why I just have so much enthusiasm for this book. And you will notice in the Ambleside Online schedule for Parables of, from Nature, you will be skipping around in the book everywhere. So if you did the year one readings, there are probably some chapters you skipped. And so into year two, you'll probably go back and fill in those gaps and go back to those chapters that the schedule recommended that you skip for now. So the last book that I mentioned that is continuing on into year two is Trial and Triumph. And this is actually a book we haven't even done. It's just not super high on my priorities list, to be completely honest. But I do know that it is a long book and it is continued even on into year three, I believe. All right, now let's talk about the new books that are introduced in year two. The first one I want to mention is A Child's History of the World by Virgil Hillier. This is one we have never done before. I, I just got it in the mail, like not that long ago. I haven't even really pre-read it or anything, but this is a huge book in the history spine of Ambleside Online. Child's History of the World does kind of intertwine in the schedule with our island story and this country of ours. So you'll want to pay close attention to the schedule for how they suggest you lay out these different chapters of these different books. Also for history is This Country of Ours. This is written by the same author of Our Island Story. Her name was H.E. Marshall. So if Our Island Story is about the history of England, This Country of Ours is about the history of the United States. The history of England bleeds directly over into the history of the United States. So I'm really excited to see how that transition happens and in, in the scope of the curriculum. I know I have a broad overview of how it happens in history, but I'm looking forward to hearing more about that because I do think that is a super interesting time in our history as a country. Also for history is a book called The Little Duke. I've actually lost my copy. This is not a very long book. I think you only read it in term one, maybe part, part of the way into term two. So it's not a long book. It's just kind of more of a history story based on one person's perspective in English history. And I lost my copy and I'm, I'm hopeful that it'll turn back up. Otherwise I'll just have to buy another one, but um, I, that's another one that does seem like a fun read. Oh, and I also want to talk about Joan of Arc by Diane Stanley. This is a book that I've kind of overlooked because I guess it starts in term three. And sometimes when I'm just being lazy and kind of planning ahead for the upcoming Ambleside Online year, I'll only look at like term one, maybe term two. So it almost stuck, snuck past me, but I did get it from Thrift Books recently. And I'm so excited to read this biography of Joan of Arc with my kids. You may remember the little part in Frozen when Anna is singing, do you want to build a snowman? And she says, hang in there, Joan. Uh, that is Joan of Arc. And so my kids have always had this concept of who Joan of Arc is, but I'm looking forward to getting into the actual history with them. Now let's start talking about the science and geography books for year two. The first one is the Burgess Animal Book. 
This is one of the many books that I have purchased from Living Book Press for, for my Ambleside Online schedule. And this is a really cool book by Thornton W. Burgess who wrote tons of animal stories books. If you're looking for good, wholesome, fun, semi-scientific reads with your kids, I recommend almost anything by Thornton W. Burgess. And the Burgess Animal Book does not disappoint. And then also in continuation from Paddle to the Sea, which we did last year, this year we do Tree in the Trail and Seabird. These are all these really beautiful illustrated geography books by Holling C. Holling. And I also purchased a set of maps that accompany these books from Beautiful Feet Books. So I will make sure to link to that in the description below because I think they make a great accompaniment to these wonderful geography books. Now we'll talk about the literature books for year two and the big one that I think is gonna be the biggest project for us this year and continuing on, I believe, into year three is Pilgrim's Progress. I've actually pre-read a good chunk of this book. I have not finished it. So I'm like, am I gonna finish it with my kids? I don't know. It's a long book and it's dense and it is kind of tough. It was written a long time ago, but it's super inspiring. I think it's well-written. I think it's kind of a must read for most people. In the schedule, it does say to read 800 words of the book a week, I believe, something like that. So it's nothing unmanageable. I think the hardest part is just knowing when to stop your reading. You don't wanna to do too much, but you also don't wanna to do too little because then you won't get enough of it done. So uh, that's how it's written out in the schedule. It's not based on chapters because the book doesn't have chapters. Next is Understood Betsy. This is one we actually just started just the other day. We read chapter one and it is lovely. I've heard so many good things about this book. So I was hoping to pre-read it before we got into it, but just haven't had the time. But I'm looking forward to diving into it with my kids because we all seem to love it so far. Also later in year two is The Wind in the Willows. This book is super popular, super well-known. It's probably one of the more mainstream books in Ambleside Online. And if you've ever been to Disneyland and been on Wild Toads, wait, Wild Toads? <laughs> if you've ever been on Mr. Toad's Wild Ride at Disneyland, then you will kind of know a small chunk of the story, but just semi Disney-fied. And I just recently read Wind of the Willows and I love it. So I'm looking forward to doing that with my kids this year. And then the last book on the literature schedule is Robin Hood. I've never read Robin Hood before. The only thing I know about him is from 50 Famous Stories Retold from year one. There was a short little chapter on Robin Hood and his Merry Men. And so I'm looking forward to doing this book. I've heard great things about this book as well. And yeah, I can't wait to dive into it. Also, I don't wanna talk about Ambleside Online without mentioning Bible study. So in year one of Ambleside Online, you were supposed to just do Bible stories. And in year two, it actually introduces actual Bible readings. So for the New Testament, this is the book of Genesis. And for the Old Testament, it is Matthew. In preparing for year two, I've kind of purchased the random books from everywhere. My favorite places to go are either my local used bookstore or Living Book Press. This is a website where a lot of these Ambleside Online books are available and they're beautiful. So I'll make sure to link to Living Book Press in the description below. Another money-saving option is to ask for either these specific books or like a gift card to somewhere where you can buy books as Christmas gifts, birthday gifts, anything like that. Um, I've done that and it's been super helpful and it's nice to have a gift card in your back pocket when you're ready to do some book shopping. Also recently, Target and Amazon both had a similar sale. It was roughly like buy two books, get one free. So I actually stocked up on a lot of Ambleside Online books that way. So just keep an eye out for anywhere that sells books. I guess that's the biggest thing that I've learned from preparing for upcoming Ambleside Online years is that the books are way more accessible than I had even anticipated. Now onto our routine. I plan on continuing the same rough routine type of thing that we're doing right now with daily copy work and daily math. I do hope to incorporate more foreign language into our daily routine as well. I do have a curriculum called Song School Spanish, which is easy to kind of incorporate into a daily routine. You can even just listen to the songs together instead of actually writing things down. I think it's a gentle way to incorporate foreign language into a daily routine. And then we typically do Ambleside online readings in the evenings, like in the, in the afternoon when I'm off work or in the evening right before bed. We also fit in readings kind of anywhere we can, but sometimes on the weekends when I have more time 
time during the day when I'm not working. Also, we listen to audiobooks a lot. So we do this in the car sometimes if we need to get caught up on something or around the house while we're doing chores. I think for history readings, it's really important to do these with your kids and be fully engaged with them because I truly believe history is the most important subject to teach in homeschool right now. But for some of these, like the literature ones, I might do more like audiobooks altogether. So like some examples of things that I'm more likely to do in audiobook form with my kids are the Burgess Animal Book and The Wind in the Willows. And of course, after the readings, we always do narration, which is something that I have always struggled with, but I'm working on getting better at and incorporating that kind of habit with my kids. If you're not quite to year two yet and you wanna learn more about year one of Ambleside Online, I will link to my video on year one right over here. See you next time and happy homeschooling.